Hi, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Sergeant Mike McCutcheon and I'm going to be your instructor today. Today I'm going to show you basic bullet reconstruction. I'm going to show you two different methods. The first method is going to be the traditional method where we use dowels and measurements to find the angles of where the bullet came from. The second method I'm going to show you is using lasers and a clear dowel that we can shoot our laser through so that you have a nice clear picture that is very powerful in court. So let's get started. I set up here a wall that I put some bullet holes through and I already have two dowels set up. So I'm going to show you how to set up these dowels. The first thing that we need to do is first look at the entrance of the bullet hole. Now this is the entrance and you can see it's pretty clear and crisp and then when we turn this you're going to see that the exit wound is rougher and you can see that the peels are coming off. So that's going to be our first thing that we need to determine is the entrance and exit. So now that we determined the entrance wound we need to set up our dowels. Now the first method I'm going to show you is using a traditional dowel. Now I'm going to put my gloves on because these are fiberglass dowels and you don't want to get any of the fiberglass to break off into your fingers. Now I'm using the kaleidoscope kit and this kit's going to have everything that you need in order to do a bullet reconstruction. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to slide on this plastic piece and what this is going to do is it's going to center the dowel into the bullet hole. If I don't do that and I put it in, the dowel may not give you an accurate result of where you want. So we're going to put that in like so and then also in the kit and it's going to be hard to see this guys but it's just this tiny little o-ring okay and that's going to go over our dowel I'm going to slide that down and the purpose of that is so that the dowel doesn't slide all the way through if you put this through a, a wall and you didn't put the dowel it could slide right through so now we have our dowel to be inserted into our bullet hole. Okay, so now we have our dowel. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually put the laser onto this. Now you can go ahead and measure your angles and I'm going to show you how to do that but while we have this set up I'm going to show you the lasers. The kaleidoscope kit comes with uh, six different lasers and so and so I'm going to open this up and show you the inside of the kit. You have the laser, you have a rubber band and you have a piece of P PVC pipe that's going to help keep that laser on for you. And this is how it sets up. Take your battery, put it in, and then you just screw the top on. It's that simple. And now you have your laser. Now this what becomes important is this little PVC pipe. This is going to slide over your laser because in order to keep the laser on, we're going to actually slide that over. And now you can see that the laser stays on. So now that we have our laser set up, I'm going to take this plastic piece which also comes in the kaleidoscope kit. I'm going to put that over the end and then we're going to screw it onto the end. It's that simple. I did that with all three. Now what we could do is turn the lasers on on all three and the lasers are going to go up and then we have our area of probability if we're shooting our laser onto um, a piece of paper and we're going back as the laser goes up then we know that that's not probable that someone's shooting from way up here so you would have an area of probability. 
what I'll show you a little bit later is I'm going to use our fog to spray the lasers and then we can see where the lasers intersect and that's going to be a good area of probability that that's where our shooter was standing. Now you may not have all these lasers to use. Now these are lasers shooting from the object that was impacted out to the shooter. What I'm going to show you after is where we start from where we think the shooter was and then shoot in and we'll use our dowels that are clear that we can shoot lasers right through. So the first things first. We're going to measure the angle of, I'm going to take these out so that we don't get confused. And now we're going to measure the angle that this came in. Before we go ahead and use our lasers or anything like that, it's critical that you make sure that you're measuring everything and you're photographing everything. So the things that we're going to need is you're going to need a regular protractor, an angle finder, and a plumb line. Very simple. And the way this is going to work, I'm just going to put this up here. And this is just a regular pr protractor. And we're going to center this over our bullet hole. And then these are the degrees or the angles. And where our plumb line falls, you're going to be able to see where the angle came in from that bullet trajectory. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to put the center right on our bullet hole, right in the center. Now, usually I use a larger protractor, and then I'm going to use an angle finder just to make sure that I have that even. Now I'm going to take my plumb line And I'm going to hold it next to the protractor. So this came in at an angle from right to left at 55 degrees. And so let me take it down. I'm going to show you from the top. So here, this is the angle that it came in. And you can see right here where I'm pointing with my index finger. That's about where the plumb line was. When I pulled it out, it moved a little, but that's where it was. So I would know that that is the angle that this bullet came in, OK? So now I would need to measure the vertical, which is the top to bottom. And I'm going to take my measurement. I'm going to put this on the top. And I'm going to measure the angle. Now this is almost straight in, I would say about one degree. And if you look at it, I'm going to hold it straight like this. And if it goes down, the negative angle, the, uh, the meter will be on the right. And then if it's going up, the meter is going to be on the left. So that's all. I put that on there to find that. Now again, you're going to be measuring on your paperwork each time you make one of those measurements. So you're going to measure your horizontal angle. You're going to measure your vertical angle. But then what we also have to do is we can determine the angle, an approximate angle, just by measuring the bullet hole. So I'm going to use my protractor. I use millimeters. And you're going to measure the length and the width. What you can determine with the length and the width is the approximate angle. Now this is trigonometry, and I can tell you I do not know trigonometry, and I am not an expert at math. So I made a cheat sheet for you that you can use that's pretty simple. And I'm going to put that right up here, and I'll show you what I mean. OK, very simply, you have the length of the bullet hole. We'll say this is the bullet hole. So we have the length of our bullet hole, and we have the height of our bullet hole. So go ahead and try this. If you need to, I'm going to use my uh, calculator. If you have a smartphone, this will work uh, with a smartphone. All you have to have is the appropriate settings. So make sure that it's on degree. And so we're going to say our height is 15 millimeters, and our width is 30. So we're just going to take 15. Divide that by 30, 
and that equals 0.05. If you look here, make sure the second button is on, and then you're going to hit sine minus 1. Oops, I'm going to have to do that again here. So we have 15 divided by 30 equals 0 0.05. Our second is on. We're going to hit our sine minus 1. It has an angle of 30 degrees. So very simple. It's a simple formula. Um, there's lots of trigonometry in determining that, but this is a nice easy formula for you to use. And you can use that for any bullet hole. And we're going to move to a car door and you're going to see uh, a little bit more of an angle and we can do the same. So millimeters, divide, make sure that it's on second, sine minus one, it's going to give you the angle. Another quick point on that is make sure that it's on degrees uh, when you're doing that. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to transition from having our lasers here and shooting outwards to we're going to have our lasers shooting in. So just take a couple minutes. I'm going to set that up. Okay, so now I have set up a car door uh, that has several bullet holes in it. Now you'll see here, this is the traditional one. I don't have the stopper in it, but it's the traditional rod, has the laser on the end. Um, we would measure our bullet hole, the height and the width to get our angle. Um, I have the laser on the end that could go off. If you didn't have a laser, use the string, which would be the same. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to use clear dowels. And these dowels are going to have the laser shine in them to light up so that we can see. I don't know if you can get that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. In the kaleidoscope kit, it has these little brackets, and it has a standard camera screw on the bottom. And you're going to be able to put your laser in that little bracket, and you put that on your tripod. Then you Set up your tripod far back as you think it needs to be. Again, as the laser's here, if I start going up and up and up and I'm way up here, well, we know that this isn't probable that the guy was 10 feet tall. So you would have an area of probability. Once all you do in a laser for each one, they're going to kind of converge on one area. You may be able to put one or two lasers on one tripod because that's where they're going to go. And then you could measure your distance from uh, the object, this being a car door, to where your shooter was. You would still have your angles. You would measure everything exactly the same. The only difference is you're shooting your laser into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the lights, and I'm going to put the lasers on, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like while these are uh, illuminated. What's nice with these is if you have a demonstration in court, they're fantastic. If you have a, um, a foam head or something like that, and you can show the bullet trajectory um, using the lasers in court. It's a real wow factor. It works really, really well. So hold on a second. I'm going to shut these lights off. I'm going to light these up for you. Okay, so I turned the lights down so that we can see this illuminating a little bit better. I used all red lasers, but you could use the green laser or the red lasers. So you can see that it's illuminating coming through. I'm just using a uh, fog spray. You'll be able to see those lasers coming up. You can see them illuminating. If you were to turn the lights even darker, these are going to illuminate even more without the spray. If these lasers were shooting outwards, you could still use the fog to go ahead and spray and get those lasers where they're all coming together so you know where your shooter was if we were shooting the laser out this way as well. Once we have our location of where our tripods are set up, again, we're going to measure. We're going to make sure that that's uh, set up properly. Um, the hardest part is making sure that the lasers are set up just right so that they're going to hit just the tip. Because if these are off just a little bit, they're not going to illuminate at all. So you have to make sure that they're set up just to make sure they hit those at the right angle. Can we turn the lights up, please?
Okay, so I went through the trajectory of how to use the clear rods. I went through the trajectory on how to use a traditional fiberglass rod. Um, sometimes you use a wooden dowel. The only thing with the wooden dowel is you got to be careful because they can warp uh, over time. So you want to make sure you're careful with that. We went over our how to measure the angle using our protractor and using the angle finder. With these basic tools, you should be able to get a decent idea of where your shooter was or to at least preliminary eliminate somebody um, from their story or if lock them into a story or if they say, oh no, I, I was standing over here. This will give you a real basic idea where you can say, nope, that definitely wasn't true. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this. I want to thank Dr. Laura Petler for helping me out with the, uh, uh, the kit here. Uh, if you want more videos, you can go to ForensicEducation.net. I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.